and XL Mechanics 1, Impulse and Momentum, Impulse. Previously, we've seen that if a force F acts on a mass over a distance D, then work is done by that force. And the work done by that force changes the kinetic energy of the mass. So we've previously seen that the work done by the force equals force times distance, and that is final kinetic energy, take away the initial kinetic energy. However, we can consider the force F acting on a mass for a time T. When we consider the time that the force is acting for, we consider what is called an impulse, capital I. And it's this impulse that changes what's called the momentum of the mass. So impulse I is force times time, and impulse changes the momentum. So impulse is final momentum, take away the initial momentum. Note, impulse and momentum are vector quantities in Newton seconds, so we must always consider the direction of our velocities and our forces and the impulse itself. So here we have a force F acting on a mass for time t to create an impulse I, and the impulse is changing the momentum of the mass. So if we apply some Newtonian methods to this, so for example we can do Newton's second law to the right on this object to get force F to the right is mass m times acceleration. And if we rearrange this for A, we get A is F over M, equation 1. And now if we choose a suitable SUVAP method, again taking right as positive, so I'm going to do V equals U plus AT. So final velocity is V equals initial velocity U plus acceleration A times the time T. And if we eliminate A now, so I'm going to use equation 1 to eliminate A, I get V equals U plus FT over M. And if I rearrange this equation for FT, I get FT equals MV minus MU. And FT, of course, is our definition of impulse. So by using a little bit of Newton's second law and a Suvat equation, we've shown that impulse does indeed change the momentum of this particle. So example one, a ball of mass two kilograms is moving at a speed five meters per second when it rebounds off a wall at three meters per second. Find the impulse acting on the ball. So impulse is a vector quantity as well as the velocities. So I'm going to put impulse on my diagram. The wall is going to push the ball away. So my impulse on the ball is going to be to the left. Nice clear label. And that's my impulse I. So the wall is going to push the ball back to the left. So my method is going to be impulse is final momentum minus initial momentum. We're dealing with vector quantities. So I need to specify which direction is positive. And I'm going to take the right as positive. So very carefully. If the right is positive, so we're looking for the impulse on the ball. The impulse on the ball is I to the left. So the impulse in my method is going to be a negative I. We're taking right as positive. Final momentum is mass 2 times its final velocity to the right. And the final velocity to the right would be minus 3. Okay? So if the velocity is 3 to the left and I'm taking right as positive, the velocity is minus 3 negative in the formula, and then the mass 2 times the initial velocity to the right. And the initial velocity to the right is nice and clearly a positive 5. So negative i is minus 6 minus 10. And if I rearrange now, I get i is 16 newton seconds. So the answer is positive 16 newton seconds, which means the diagram 
the arrow is in the correct direction, we've got a positive answer, i.e. the impulse is to the left. So the impulse is pushing the ball backwards to the left, as indicated on the diagram. And a nice little thing to think about this is the we ended up adding two numbers together to get the answer 16, and that's because we need a big impulse because the big impulse has done two things. The wall has had to stop the ball, or the mass, and push it backwards at 3 metres per second. So we ended up with the 6 plus the 10 creating the 16. So the wall has stopped the object moving and pushed it away, and therefore we needed a big impulse of 16 newton seconds to the left. Example 2. A ball of mass 2 kilograms is moving at a speed of 5 metres per second when it speeds up to 12 metres per second due to a force acting for a time of 4 seconds. Find the force acting. Okay. So if this force is acting on this mass, it will create an impulse. And I think it's fairly obvious the impulse will be to the right because it's made the ball speed up from 5 to 12 meters per second, so I'm going to label my impulse I. So there's my impulse to the right, and um, I know that impulse is force times time, so I know that the impulse I to the right is the force F, which was produced times the time taken, which is 4. So I know the impulse is 4 times F Newton seconds. I can now do impulse is change in momentum. So impulse is final momentum minus initial momentum. And I'm going for convenience just to take right as positive. So the impulse to the right on my diagram is a positive I indicated on the diagram. The final momentum is 2 kilograms and that's moving to the right at 12 meters per second. So that's a positive 12 take away 2 kilograms and the initial velocity to the right was a positive 5. So the impulse is 24 take away is 14 but we know that the impulse is 4F and therefore the force, the constant force acting on this mass for 4 seconds was 3.5 newtons and that's like the impulse was to the right. The force was acting to the right. As we can see the method there. And make a note there, because we're dealing with vector quantities, your diagram should always be clearly labelled with either an impulse I or the force that has created the impulse. So make sure it's clear what is labelled with an arrow on your diagram. So find the impulse on a body of mass 3 kilograms when its speed changes from 5 meters per second to 4 meters per second in the opposite direction. And again, it's important to draw a diagram. So here's a diagram. We've got the mass of 3 kilograms. It was initially moving on my diagram to the right at 5 meters per second, and afterwards it was moving in the opposite direction with a reverse arrow at 4 meters per second, and we're looking for the impulse. If it was initially going to the right at 5 meters per second and it ends up going to the left at 4 meters per second, the impulse to create that change must be to the left on the ball. So I'm going to call that impulse I acting to the left. So now impulse is change of momentum. I'm going to take right as positive for this particular question. So the impulse to the right according to my diagram is a negative I because the arrow on the diagram is pointing to the left. So the, if I'm taking right as positive, this is a negative I. Final momentum is three times and the velocity, so if it's going backwards at four meters per second, the velocity is a negative four according to my positive direction, minus, and we need the initial momentum, which is three kilograms move in with a velocity of positive 5. So we've got minus i 
is minus 12 minus 15, therefore i is 27 newton seconds. So that's a positive answer, which means the arrow on my diagram is correct and the impulse is to the left and it is 27 newton seconds. As you can see the method there. And again, we ended, ended up adding the two um, values together because we needed a big impulse to stop the body moving and then push it backwards at 4 metres per second. So that's why we ended up with a big answer. In the next session, we're going to be looking at conservation of momentum.